want to explore two or three other dimensions that you spoke about. You spoke about capacity, you talk, spoke about leadership. So talk to us a little bit about what you see as, what are, who are leaders and what is leadership? Is there a difference? Is it... I know there's a lot of talk about leadership and wanting to become leaders. I don't think anybody should try to become a leader, it's quite obscene that I want to become a leader, that means all of you should be what? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what you would like to call yourself. <laughs> it's not about you wanting to become a leader or someone want to be wanting to become a leader. Because of a certain thing that you have done within yourself or a certain level of observation or a certain intelligence or a certain experience, you are able to see something that most people are not able to see. The moment you're able to see something, then people will naturally look up to you as a leader because you're seeing something that they cannot see. And if you become a leader, there are many ways to become a leader. You can get elected, you can get selected, you can work it, you can pull other people down and become a leader or simply people will rise you as a leader because they see that Either you're able to see something or you're able to do something which they themselves cannot do. I feel this is the way leadership should happen, if you want to call it that, that someone is able to see something and do something that others cannot do, so everybody wishes he must take charge of the situation because naturally he will be able to do something that the others will not be able to do. So what is the quality of leadership? Leadership means once you sit on a perch, you better see clearer than others, otherwise you'll make a ridiculous fool of yourself <laughs> There's a whole, you know, in the mm -hmm. nation certain things have been happening. Right. Somebody sits on a perch and he doesn't see any better than you, he looks like a fool immediately. So it is not about you wanting to sit on the perch, you wanting to see something must get you to the perch. Not because you want to be above everybody else, you get to the perch. So what is the quality of a leader? I don't think there's any particular quality. One thing is, a leader means his sense of life is beyond himself. It's not about his sense of identity is beyond himself. Somebody becomes a leader because he's willing to think and feel and act for more people than himself. If you act for yourself, you're called self-centered. If you just uh, act for the sake of two or three people you gather in the form of family, you are named as Dhritarashtra, there are modern names for that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> if you identify yourself with the entire nation or the world, you'll be looked at in a different way. Essentially, your leadership will come from the right context depending upon what you're identified with because everybody needs an identity, what sort of identity have you taken will determine the context and the quality of your leadership. In that context, um, isn't leadership something that, you know, each of us can individually manifest? If I were to describe one dimension of leadership as saying it is about taking ownership to create a better outcome, in that context, you know, we can convert leadership from a noun to a verb. I don't know that much grammar, okay <laughs> But you can try. <clears throat> See, whatever we do, every human activity, the purpose of an activity is to produce something. Mm -hmm. Production may be a safety pin, a computer, love, joy, health, well-being, it doesn't matter what. We want to produce something, when we act, we want it to be effective. How small an act or how big an act is not the important. We want something to happen effectively, which means it's a question of efficiency, it's a question of with how little, how much more you could do. That's what makes you… because all of us have the same amount of time in a day. People always tell me, Sadhguru, you had such a long day. I said, unfortunately, there's no long day, but you know, they give me only twenty-four hours. I would like to bargain for more, but it's not happening. 
you can… you can make it more mm -hmm. by in increasing your efficiency, the way you function, may… including people as a part of yourself where other people will function as a part of you so that you don't have to bother about so many things around you. In this sense, you can enhance what you do. But time-wise, all of us have the same time, we can't help it. So, how much can you produce, in how little time, in how much… how little material is the question. In the limited span of time which we have as life, what is it that we can do? Is it just about efficiency? Is it about simply mindless efficiency, do better, do better? No. At different times in history, people seem to want different things on the surface. But essentially, no matter which time of history, who they are, which part of the world they are, everybody wants the same thing, well-being. But their idea of well-being, everybody has their idea how to get there, but everybody wants well-being, no question about that. It doesn't matter which part of the world you go, whether you came here thousand years ago or today, a hundred years later, you will see people will be still seeking well-being. In pursuit of well-being, Maybe hundred years ago, somebody would be going in search of water, today you're going in search of the Wi-Fi cloud, <laughs> but <laughs> still well-being. People's idea of well-being, whatever that is, but people are only well, only when something beautiful happens within themselves. They think they're going to cause it to themselves by some means. But people have been happy before the Wi-Fi came, People have been happy before the automobile came, people have been happy before all the luxuries we are enjoying today appeared. So what I'm saying is, well-being, if you're in pursuit of well-being, essentially it is about what happens within the human being. What happens within the human being in the name of so many things, I don't want to name all the things, in the name of so many things, what we call as family, society, and another world which we call as corporate world. <laughs> all these things we created, these are all different names or different mechanisms that we believe will bring well-being to us. Somebody built a family, somebody built a corporation, both in pursuit of well-being, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I must tell you this, the first time I was at Davos of many years ago, yeah. they were almost resentful. Why… what is a mystic doing an economic summit <laughs> I… and uh, a particular CEO who was running… was in charge of uh, a top computer manufacturing company, three months later they got sold out to the Chinese <laughs> <laughs> We can guess who they were <laughs> <laughs> So he was very resentful, what are you doing here? Then I told him, see, What's your business? He said, I do computers. So see whether you manufacture a computer or a safety pin or in between anything. Fundamentally, this is about human well-being. The basic business is human well-being. You may do it through your computer, somebody will produce safety pin, somebody will produce a cloth, somebody will produce something else. It doesn't matter what you're doing, the, ba the fundamental business is human well-being and that's my business too. And that's why I'm here. <laughs> 